I'm Johan Granström. I'm an engineering director here at Affinity, and I lead the teams that are responsible for implementing the canister abstraction. We think that software canisters are a key concept that will help us scale a collaborative and open internet. To a first approximation, a software canister is a bundle of code and data that runs on the internet computer. When hearing about software canisters for the first time, people with different backgrounds make different associations. Today, we will talk about four different perspectives. First, an Ethereum developer may think about smart contracts. A second, a PhD student may think about actors, as would most people with this type of academic background. Third, a system engineer may think about processes, like in an operating system. This was my first association when I heard about canisters. Finally, number four, a virtual machines expert may think about WebAssembly modules. All of these associations are correct, but partial. However, together they paint a rather complete picture. So let's go through all four. A canister is like a smart contract because its execution is governed by a secure protocol, the Internet Computer Protocol, or ICP. Therefore, a canister is tamper-proof. This means that its state can only be modified through messages included in the blockchain, which is governed by the protocol. Also, as the execution of canister code is fully deterministic, a canister's state can be audited in a cryptographically secure way by inspecting the messages in the blockchain. So a canister has all capabilities of a traditional smart contract. In contrast to smart contracts, however, a canisters have performance characteristics that makes it possible to use them to build internet-scale software services. In summary, a canister is like a smart contract that scales. Now, let us take a step back and think about canisters from a more abstract point of view. From this perspective, a canister is much like an actor in the sense of Carl Hewitt and others. The actor model is a mathematical model of concurrent computation where, in response to a message, an actor can do three things. First, it can modify its local or private state. Second, it can send messages. And third, it can create more actors. A canister is like an actor in many respects. It has private state that can only be modified by the canister itself. It has a single thread of execution, so it does not need lock-based synchronization. It communicates with other canisters through asynchronous messages, and it can create new canisters. An important difference between traditional actors and canisters is that canisters on the internet computer have a bi-directional message passing. Messages are divided into requests and responses, where requests can be replied to and the internet computer keep tracks of the callback for responses. In actor terminology, each actor has a mailing address that is used to send messages to it. A canister also has a mailing address, which happens to look much like an IPv6 address. Definity also develops the Motoko programming language, which is inspired by the actor model. A single canister has only one thread of execution for updates, but the internet computer executes a potentially massive number of canisters in parallel. This is how the internet computer overcomes the performance limitations of some early platforms for smart contracts. In addition, we make a distinction between requests that need to update the state of a canister and queries which cannot modify the state of a canister. While a canister's update throughput is limited by the blockchain and the single thread of execution, a canister can serve hundreds of queries concurrently, achieving a throughput in the order of thousands of queries per second and latency measured in milliseconds. To complete this picture, it has to be added that end users also participate as actor in this model, at least to an extent. This means that browsers and mobile apps can directly perform update and query operations directly on canisters. We now leave the abstract world of actors and look a bit more under the hood of a canister. From this perspective, a canister is much like a process in an operating system like Linux, macOS, or Windows. The operating system keeps track of valid memory ranges for a process, while a canister has a bound on its linear memory enforced by the internet computer. The operating system scheduler wakes up a process when there is work to be done, while the internet computer schedules the execution of canisters. The operating system maintains a state on behalf of a process, like open file descriptors and the parent process. Similarly, the internet computer maintains state on behalf of a canister. But instead of things like file descriptors, it keeps track of the canister's balances of tokens and cycles, its outstanding calls, a permission, and much more. Just like a process cannot directly modify its table of file descriptors, a canister cannot directly modify its balances of tokens, for obvious reasons. 
The operating system provides functionality to processes that allow them to perform special operations, like manipulating files and communicating with peripheral devices. Similarly, the Internet computer provides APIs to canisters, so they can make payments, a call out to other canisters, create and manage canisters, manage permissions, and get the system time. This is a non-trivial function in a distributed system. We also provide access to secure randomness. And, as far as I know, this is a unique feature of the Internet computer. In the future, canisters will also be able to sign Bitcoin and Ethereum contracts through such APIs. Behind the scenes, the biggest difference between a process and a canister is that a canister is replicated over all nodes in a subnetwork. This is the smart contract aspect of a canister. But there are also a few more subtle differences. When a process malfunctions, it crashes. But when a canister malfunctions, caused by a trap in a WebAssembly, it does not crash. Instead, its state is rolled back to what it was before the current message has started executing, so the canister can continue execute new messages. Of course, this is of little help if the canister crashes on all messages it receives, but it's a very useful a safeguard against accidentally missed cases in the logic of a canister. In fact, a canister cannot terminate in the same way a process can terminate, because there is no exit or abort system call. A canister can only be removed from the internet computer by its controller through an administrative command. The controller of a canister is a user or another canister that is allowed to perform administrative commands, such as removing or updating the canister. In fact, a canister controlling another canister is a key ingredient when building autonomous or self-governing services on the internet computer. This is an interesting topic, but not my focus for today. So our third point of view is that a canister is like a process running on the internet computer's operating system. The last topic that I want to talk about is that a canister is much like a WebAssembly module instance. This is more than just an analogy. This is how canisters are actually implemented on the internet computer. Technically, the code part of a canister is a WebAssembly module that imports the system API. That is the functionality provided to the canister by the internet computer. Moreover, a canister can export an API of its own that other canisters can call into. According to the WebAssembly specification, a module instance is the, a dynamic representation of a module complete with its own state and execution stack. So a canister is a WebAssembly module instance, not just a WebAssembly module. This is an important distinction. A canisters use orthogonal or transparent persistence to make it seem like the module instance lives forever. This means that developers don't have to care about databases or a file I.O. to persistently store a variable you just write it to memory. The operation of persisting the data is completely transparent to the developer, or orthogonal in the sense that the developer does not have to do anything special to persist the data. All writes to a canister linear memory are tracked for two reasons. First, so that failed computations or WebAssembly traps can be rolled back. The second reason is that if a replica in the subnetwork crashes, for example due to a power outage, when it comes back online, it will request modified pages from other replicas so it can resume its operation. This is how the internet computer maintains the illusion of providing WebAssembly module instances with indefinite lifetime. The internet computer embraces WebAssembly. This gives us several benefits. The most obvious benefit is that canisters can be written in any language that can target WebAssembly, including Motoko. So canisters written in different languages are fully interoperable. WebAssembly is also deterministic, modulo a few special cases that are rather easy to rule out. This makes it a good match with smart contracts. Another benefit is that WebAssembly has a formal semantics. So with a longer time horizon, we expect to see end-to-end -end formally verified WebAssembly execution environments, providing additional security. Moreover, the internet computer will evolve with the WebAssembly specification, adding support for new features as they become mature enough. For example, it is on our roadmap to support multiple modules in a single canister. In summary, a canister is all of these four things. It is a smart contract, it is an actor, it is a process, and it is a WebAssembly module instance. To wrap things up, here are a few key takeaways. Software canisters 
are the building blocks of the Internet computer of the future. Internet scale services will be implemented by many collaborating canisters. WebAssembly limits the linear memory available to a canister to a couple of gigabytes, at least for now. A service with a billion users could require thousands of canisters just to store user data. This is not a problem. The canister abstraction is designed to scale, both vertically by becoming more powerful over time, but mainly through horizontal scaling or scaling out using a large number of canisters that collaborate to implement a single service. If you want, you can start developing canisters already today. Just download our SDK, create a canister and deploy it to the Sodium network. We are working hard and will continue to work hard to make it a joyful experience to develop, deploy and scale applications built using canisters.